What's up everybody? Welcome back to part two of my Snapmaker original three-in-one machine review. In the previous video in this series, I covered the 3D printing portion of this machine, and today I'm gonna to be covering the laser engraving function. If you haven't checked out part one, make sure to do that because I go into a little bit more detail about Snapmaker and how they got their start. I'm going to dedicate a whole video to each of the three functions, so make sure to check back in a while for part three covering the CNC routing ability. So without further ado, let's get started. Welcome back everybody, I'm Charlie with Modern Hobbyist. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and click that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video. I also wanna thank Snapmaker for sending me this machine to review, and I wanna state that despite the fact that they sent it to me for free, I still intend to give it a full and honest review. With all of that out of the way, let's get started actually reviewing this thing. Once I got the machine assembled and set up, which by the way is super fast and easy, the first thing I noticed was how incredibly small this machine is. I consider the small size a pro in regard to the 3D printing functionality because I don't often print things that are huge simply because I'm impatient and it takes a long time to print something that big. For laser engraving though, that's not necessarily the case. Generally speaking, most laser engraving jobs are a lot faster because they're only two-dimensional. Technically, you could be cutting, which I suppose would be a three-dimensional operation, but in the end, you're talking about a few passes over the material, whereas 3D printing something this size could have hundreds of layers. With this machine, you're limited to engraving things about the size of a coaster, but there are still a ton of cool things you could make with that limited build size. For example, if you wanted to run an Etsy shop, this machine would be perfect for coasters and ornaments or even just laser engraving your brand onto small merchandise. And in the event that you're super limited by space in your studio, this little machine could be the perfect addition for you. So moving past the size, I wanted to talk a little bit about the construction and assembly of this machine. It's made primarily from extruded aluminum and other machined aluminum parts, so it's lightweight, it can be assembled in minutes, and switching machine functions is a breeze. There are four screws on the back of the tool head that you need to remove before installing the new tool head, and if you're switching to or from 3D printing, you'll also need to swap out the build plate. The machine automatically detects which tool head is installed, so there's no additional configuration needed from the touchscreen. Simply swap the tool heads over and you're ready to start laser engraving. I don't personally switch between functions very often, but it wouldn't be totally crazy to try switching back and forth several times a day, since it only takes about five minutes. So once you've got your machine all set up to do some laser engraving, this is where Lubin comes into play. Lubin is the software provided by Snapmaker to allow you to utilize the functions of this machine. While Lubin can't compete with other 3D printing slicers like Ultimaker Cura or Prusa Slicer, it actually does a pretty good job when it comes to laser engraving. Lubin has a built-in editor where you can design your projects directly and it also allows you to import PNGs, JPEGs, or most importantly, SVG files. As a beginner to laser engraving, I had no trouble getting some projects thrown together with Lubin, and I found all the controls easy to figure out and use. The one thing that I was really disappointed to find Lubin didn't support was the ability to undo or redo actions within the software. If I accidentally made a mistake when moving shapes around in the editor, there was no easy way to get the design back to the state it was in prior to the mistake. The other issue I found with Lubin is that it didn't have the ability to set different fill options for various parts of the SVG file. For example, when I tried to engrave my logo, I found that it wanted to fill in the entire hexagon rather than just the logo text. To get around this, I just exported the logo in two separate SVG files and imported both of them into Lubin. From there, I was able to tell it what size I wanted the design to be, what power to have the laser at for each portion of the logo, and how many passes I want it to make. Like I said, I don't have any experience when it comes to laser engraving, but since Lubin was so easy to figure out, I'll give it an A for now. So now that I had a design ready to engrave, it was time to see how well this thing actually worked. To get started engraving, I picked some material, in this case, some cardstock, and I mounted it to the platform using magnets on either side. Now 
Next, I needed to set a work origin for the design. To do this, the machine came with a calibration card to help you get the laser dialed into the right distance, a process that is incredibly easy to do using the touchscreen. I just needed to move the tool head up and down until the laser was smaller than the little black dot on the calibration card. Now, I don't know if this is unique to my machine, but I couldn't actually get the laser to fit inside the dot, despite trying to focus the laser by adjusting the laser itself. So I just got it as close as I could and I moved on. Next, I adjusted the X and Y position to get the laser to the correct starting point for my workpiece. I started pretty conservatively with the power output and I found that it had almost no effect on the cardstock I was using. After some tests, I finally got it leaving permanent marks at around 80% power. And keep in mind, this was on cardstock, not even anything more sturdy like wood or leather. So right off the bat, my first thought about this machine is that the stock laser is not very powerful. The machine comes with a 200 milliwatt laser, which is definitely enough to mark up a good number of materials, but you're not going to be cutting through really anything thicker than paper. I was hoping that I'd be able to cut through thin wood at the very least, but even after making six passes at 100% power output, I had barely begun to cut into the wood. On that note though, there is some good news as Snapmaker sells a laser upgrade module, which will get you a 1600 milliwatt laser. With this upgrade, I would be able to cut through that eighth inch thick plywood and many other thin materials as well. But for comparison, the Glowforge comes with a 40 watt laser, which is equivalent to 40,000 milliwatts. So you're definitely limited by the power of the Snapmaker's laser. There is a huge price difference there, so it's not a very fair comparison. And on top of that, Considering the Snapmaker laser is in open air, I wouldn't want anything much more powerful than 1600 milliwatts. On that note, since it is made from easy to obtain materials like the aluminum extrusion, replacement parts and upgrades are actually pretty cheap as well. There is a height extension upgrade available for $99 and Snapmaker also sells an enclosure for just $129. Now, before I wrap this up, there is one more thing that I wanted to mention that does sort of bother me about this machine. Even with it just sitting idly, the fan inside the electronics box is outputting around 65 to 70 decibels, which is about equal to a loud conversation. For comparison, my other 3D printers put out around 54 decibels when idle, which is a much more tolerable amount for me. Now, the noise isn't totally unbearable, but if you're running longer jobs on the Snapmaker, you'll probably want to invest in that enclosure or have it in a different room because it can get irritating after a while. And those numbers are just while it's sitting idly. It only gets louder when the stepper motors are moving back and forth. But in the end, the noise is just a minor inconvenience for me. Overall, I think this is a great machine and I can't wait to get started making some really cool, albeit really small, projects with it. I found the laser functionality to be incredibly accurate despite the low powered laser and I was able to put together some really cool designs with no previous laser engraving experience. While it can't do all the things that other dedicated laser engravers can do, at just around $650 right now, I think this is a great machine to get things started in your workshop. The simple user interface and seamless integration with Lubin makes it a great tool for beginners like me. And if you're tight on space and the noise won't bother you, the Snapmaker Original 3-in-1 3D printer is the machine for you. That's all for this one though. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss part three of this series where I cover the CNC routing function. Follow me on Instagram so you get updates on the projects I'm working on, and don't forget to smash that like button. Also, check out my Patreon page and consider supporting my channel to help me keep making awesome videos like this. Otherwise, that's all for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.